Welcome to the new section of our course. In this section, we'll explore the importance of having a structured approach to creating schedules and planning how we execute our tasks to be more productive and efficient in our roles as planning engineers. We'll start by defining our WBS ID codes for each WBS level and use them as our activity codes, references for WBS paths, and activity IDs. This way, we can easily create our scheduled data for Primavera P6 import. We will also discuss best practices in defining our activity names to help project team members and stakeholders clearly understand the scope of each task. By the end of this section, we will have a scheduled ID coding template that we will use as a guide and reference throughout our upcoming lessons. Let's get started. Creating a work breakdown structure is a fundamental step in project management that helps break down the project scope into manageable components. Now, why is it important to assign a coding system to our WBS? While we could create a WBS with random IDs or loosely structured numbering, this approach can lead to confusion and make it challenging to automatically link our detailed activities to the WBS. In this exercise, our aim is to assign IDs to our WBS levels that clearly represent each level. For example, using GF for ground floor WBS makes it much easier to identify and understand. The number of levels in a WBS and the specific levels used can vary depending on the project and organizational preferences. In our case, we'll follow a common WBS structure. The first level is the project level, which serves as the unique project ID for our schedule. Next, we have the summary level, representing major project deliverables. This is where we place the WBS elements for engineering, procurement, and construction. The third level is the phase or building level, where we break down the project into different phases or individual building structures. The fourth level is the discipline level, helping us categorize work by discipline or specialty. Finally, we have the floor level as the last level, allowing us to further detail our scope by individual floors. Let's take a look at some examples of our WBS ID codes in our Excel template. For the first level, which is the project ID, we have MB01. In the second level, we assign two ID codes. For milestones, we use MS, and for general requirements, we use GR, and so on. Now moving to the third level, we have MB for main building and EW for external works. On the fourth level, we further break it down. We use SB for substructure, representing civil and structural works below ground level. SS stands for superstructure, which represents structural works above ground level and so on. Finally, for the fifth WBS level, we add floor level codes such as GF for the ground floor, 1F for the first floor, and so on. Keep in mind that you can add more WBS levels, especially if your project has a larger scope and many activities to handle on each floor. Now everything we've discussed so far applies to the WBS for construction activities. In our ID coding template, we've introduced color coding for each level 2 WBS. This helps differentiate the WBS level definitions that are specific to level 2. WBS for milestones, general requirements, engineering, and procurement will each have a different WBS structure for each level. In the milestone WBS, we have major milestones in level 3 for high-level events like project kickoff, project completion, and key client approvals. We want to include intermediate milestones to track smaller but still important achievements, such as the completion of structural work for each floor. The specific WBS coding can vary depending on the project scope, consultant requirements, and organizational practices. Feel free to modify it as needed. As we continue to define and develop our schedule, we may encounter situations where additional WBS categories are necessary. In such cases, we can include them, but it's important to maintain consistency and update the WBS coding system for our reference. Here's an example of applying the WBS ID coding system that we'll create in the upcoming section of our course. Once we've set up and assigned our WBS level IDs to each activity, we can easily generate our WBS path and activity ID. 
we can also leverage our WBS codes as our activity codes. This simplifies the process of importing activities into Primavera P6, automatically organizing them under their respective WBS and assigning activity codes. This method will also help us with the filtering and review of activities, making it easier for us to develop and manage our schedule. That's it for this lesson. In the next video, we will discuss methods for structuring proper activity IDs and defining activities in our schedules to improve clarity and communication. Stay tuned for our next lesson.